What is up, podcast, and welcome to the Race Place Podcast Network. We have another amazing show for you today. Killer, killer guest here today. My guest is owner and proprietor of Bright Aesthetics, Inc. That's Bright Aesthetics, Inc. I-N-K. The reason why the I-N-K, because they're doing like tattoos over there or something. I don't know what's going on over there, but we are going to find out. My special guest today, microblading experts. Please help me welcome Jackie. What's up, Jackie? Hey, how's it going? I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Glad you can make it. Um, first of all, for the people that don't know, what is microblading? Is it like tattooing your arms, tattooing your face? What, what, what is it a tattoo at all? What, what is microblading? So uh, microblading, it's, it is a form of a tattoo, but it's really cool because a long, a long time ago, you know, they had the old school tattoos. It was like, you know, that solid line that turned blue, like or purple or red. Oh, yeah. Like people yeah. would get it. And it was cool. Like the first week and all of a sudden it spread yes. like, tattoos, like when you're old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's nothing like that. Um, it's actually I use a blade um, and I dip it in ink. So what I do is I'm drawing literally drawing hair strokes to create an eyebrow. So it's just more realistic. Um, and colors come a long way too from back in the day. So it, it heals really realistic and it's kind of like a 3d type of eyebrow. So it's pretty cool. Wow. So it's not a tattoo machine. It's an actual blade that you're drawing in or cutting in every single blade of hair, right. hair follicles. Right. Yeah. One, one by one. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. And like you said, well, the the technology back in the day, even five six years ago, wasn't that great. Um, yeah. What, no. what 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 other options even before tattooing? I mean, I mean that alone is nightmarish looking. I've seen people. Yeah. Think. I've pretty bad. I've even seen uh, back in the day uh, there was a guy that I seen he, 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 he like shaved his eyebrows and then got his, his, the old school tattooing eyebrow. Oh no. It didn't look very well. So I should tell that yeah. guy that you're available now that, that, yeah. the, that the new technology <laughs> here for, for the men as well. <laughs> yeah, no, I've seen some pretty gnarly, uh, old tattoos. I mean, even I've seen pretty bad tattoos just from people nowadays. Um, so you got to really know your stuff. I mean, it's, you can, that's your face too. You know, it's like, yeah, you got to know your stuff. How did like, and, and, and back in the day, like even like, did they do it with the blade too? Or did they use a tattoo machine? No. So they use a tattoo machine back in the day. Um, hey. So now there's a new technique also, which I do. It's called an ombre brow. Um, and oh. I do use a tattoo machine, but the technique is different from like your average tattoo. So like needles are different. Technique is different. So like, you know, your arm, it's, it's a totally different technique. So that's probably why, you know, there's a lot of brows that have turned colors or they're like, you know, thick or it, it's just, yeah, it, oh, it's yeah. come a long way. Yeah. Oh. Even before that, what were the, what were the other options that people had? Like pretty much just because, because I mean, for, for, for the men in my audience, give them a little background of what you ladies generally do every morning. You for some, I, I see my wife plucking her eyebrows and then putting, putting them back on. Like before she met you is like, she would yeah. click them, then paint them back on. I, I, I never understood that. Like I, like <laughs> I was blessed with the full bush of eyebrow here. As you can see yeah. on Spotify, I have these giant tree stumps on each of my eyes. I would yeah. never like pluck them out and then try to draw them back in. It didn't make sense to me. Well, yeah. Is it just yeah. trying, trying to refine them? Is that what they're trying to do? Yeah. I think it's more about refining them. Um, but yeah, it's back. Like, you know, there was a trend, like the thin eyebrows were like a trend, you know, back in the day for women, but I think it's, yeah, pretty much to refine them, but that's, that's really your alternative. If you don't want to get microblading or you filling them in. So that's your, yeah. own, that's annoying. So. <laughs> yeah. It's like every day you got to wake up and do, and do that, you know, pluck them a certain way yeah. you want them and then fill in where you took out too much maybe, or like refine them. Like you said, for years, women have been doing that every single day, like drawing them in perfectly, making sure the edge went down at a certain point right? every single day, every single day. Yeah. And now they have you. Yeah. And this is permanent. This is something that is permanent. Don't have to worry about it anymore. I mean, and the thing is too, like, can you imagine swimming and having like 
you know, they're like running down, you know, your, your makeup. So that's oh, what wow. we're yeah, that's what women love about it, you know, is just not having to worry about it, saving time in your morning routine. You're just, I mean, this is like a game changer for, for women. And I've done a few, um, I've had a few male clients too. Really? So, yeah. So, awesome. um, which was really cool. I haven't done too many, but I would love to do more of them. I love, I, it's so cool. So I, you're, what you're telling me is I can streamline these tree trunks. I can kind of yeah. like, like get a, get a, get a, like a, like a, like a razor, like a buzzer and go bzzz and like buzz it <laughs> down and then have you just like kind of borderline it, like kind of borderline and make it look nice and refined. Right. Yeah. I mean, if that's the look you're going for, we can make it happen for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all not game. You know how they say I'm game. I'm not game for that. I'm not game. Yeah. But, yeah. but I'm sure it'd be great. And if you, some people aren't blessed with these beautiful bushes that I got yeah. over my eyebrow. So they had, they probably need to fill in like, like when you did my mom, my mom has nothing. So yeah. she had, she needed that. She it was, she was so excited right. to get it. It was awesome. Yeah. You you yeah. did my you did my wife as well. Let me see right. let, let me see if I can share the screen of what my wife looked like uh before. Okay. Let's see here. Let me see. Yeah, hers uh, and she was funny too cuz she was like really scared in the beginning I remember she's like, "Uh, oh, I don't know, you know, I you know, and then she came in the first time and she said, "Okay, natural did it." And then she came back the second time, "I want a bold." I want a bowler. <laughs> <laughs> so at first she was really timid. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. But she were, they were awesome. They were awesome. I loved it. And I love that they just came as a tripod. It was so cool. Yeah. My cousin went down there as well. Right. Yeah. Uh huh. That, that's awesome. My cousin went down there. My mom went down there. Every, everybody was stoked. Let me show you the before of, of, of my wife. Let me show you that real quick. Can you see that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, that is not my wife. But, but but there's I don't have I don't have a picture of the before of my wife. But that is generally what it looked like. It was really thick here in the top, right? It yeah, kind of like that. And then yeah. she ro she rolled away looking like this gangster style. Yeah. She was like, like like this, like, yeah. like that. It's like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't have. Let me let me let me let me try to go back. Let me let me go back to. Uh, that's not my wife, by the way. I'm just joking. Let me uh, <laughs> let's go to your. Oh, wait, are you talking about the same Mel here? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> multiple, yeah, multiple white. No, that is not my wife. Uh, let's go to your actual, uh, your actual Instagram. Your Esther. It's uh, bright, right? Bright, yeah. Bright aesthetics underscore e. Because you have a, you have a little video here of of when you did her. That's her right there, right? That's her right there. Yeah, that's yeah. when she came for her touch up. Yeah. And this is the process. Um, it, it's crazy because there's a whole process to it. Um, you, you, how, how do you, what did you have to do to learn this? Did you go to, cause I know there's now there's a tattoo school back in my day yeah. when I was getting tattoos, it was like a 12 pack of beer, uh, uh, yeah. you take your headphones, you rip out the, the, the machine and you get a guitar yeah. cord and do it. It's not like that anymore. Cause I see the, I saw the line, you saw the lines there earlier. There's this, there's this supposedly there's like this, uh, beauty ratio, one point something or other that there's, a, there's like certain uh, like 1.618 is like the beauty ratio or something like that. There's like special, uh, I mean, everything has to be kind of symmetrical, right? Cause yeah. You really mess yeah. Things up. So, yeah. So there's a, it's called a brow mapping process. So you basically take a string with ink on it and you're literally just measuring all the points on the face. So that's how you create the brow is just, you measure with their face. Oh, so wow. yeah, that's kind of how you create the outline. And, um, Actually, if you scroll down, I ha I do have a picture of your wife's uh, before oh, yeah. and after. There's a before and after of her brows on there. If you scroll down a little bit. Let's go. Um, Get from that one. So, yeah. So, that's after she came for a touch-up. But if you scroll down a little bit and let's see, a little bit more and it's coming up. Stop. So, oh, so go up a little bit. So, it's the white. Oh, um, right here. Yep. Nice. So this is before it almost exactly like the picture I showed you. <laughs> Identical. I I can't, they were Identical. super thick, just like that. It was super thick. And then, yeah. and, 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 and so it was like this, but, but with her, but with her, like there's, is it was like, there was a lot of spaces missing. So right. you were able to fill it in. I yeah. mean, this is huge for women. I mean, this, 
I mean, the confidence level, my, 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 my wife was like glowing when she came back. She was all excited to have yeah. this. I mean, from here before missing, um, my mom was like completely missing all this stuff. Like yeah. so you fill it in and make it look perfect, uh, right. using your measurement tactics. And I mean, women have to be completely excited, right? I mean, after they oh, walk yeah. out of the salon, the confidence level, the glowing, because yeah. it's perfect and, and it's, it's permanent, right? How long does something like this last? Yep. Usually. Um, so it'll last on you. It just, it kind of starts to fade a little bit after like maybe a year and a half to two years. Oh, okay. um, yeah. But I will definitely say like, I've had people cry. I mean, I've had ladies cry and hug me and I've done a lot of cancer patients too. Oh, and it's wow. just such a beautiful thing to give them that back, you know? That's got to be huge. I mean, I was going to say for, for most people, um, it, I don't know, like when you age too, you start to lose your eyebrows. Women yeah. you tend to lose their eyebrows. You t uh, like me, you lose your hair. I have nothing underneath, but you lose your eyebrows and before, like we were saying, there was nothing. There was no, uh, there was just Crayola. You can put, you can get yeah. a crayon and pretty much draw it in. You can take somebody and completely transform the way they look. It's yeah, incredible. right. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. It's a pretty cool feeling. Just seeing the the look on, on my client's face and just giving them that, like giving them that confidence, like you said. That's amazing. You, so, so can anybody just start carving people's faces like this or do you need a license or something like that? So, um, oddly enough, um, you actually don't need a license. Um, all you need to take is a blood borne pathogen and get your health permit. Um, I'm actually, so how I started was, um, I've been an esthetician for 20 years. Oh, so okay. that's, that's kind of how I got into this, but, um, yeah, in California, you actually don't need to have a license. It's, just more of like a certain a bloodborne pathogens, your health permit, and that, that's it. So yeah, it's it's crazy in California, but but you actually don't. So wow, no no yeah. license, but you you took some training though, right? You like you went yes. into because I know because I'm in the I happen to be in the nail business. My wife and we're both in the beauty business, but um, a lot of my like my like for nails, you have to take at least 400 hours in California. Right. Or, you know, some states it's 600 hours, some states it's 800 hours. If you're full Cosmo, you got to do like a thousand hours. You're going to do hair, you're going to do nails, it's a thousand hours. Right. For, for, for you, what, what kind of training did you end up taking for yourself? You obviously didn't want to be some face carver. You wanted to be the best of the best. You wanted to change people's life like you're doing. You wanted to do it right. So, and I know these, I, some of my girls, my nail girls have taken classes like $5,000, 6,000, spent a lot of money. Yeah. I'm sure that's something you did. You took some time. Like what, what, what was the training like to do this? Um, so my first training I did, it was three days. Um, typically they're usually like around three days for the training, but I've taken multiple training courses. You're really never like one and done. You're fine. You're okay. You're good. You, you do have to take a lot of training because there's a lot of information that you miss, um, just like in one class. And the other thing too, is you kind of pick up on different techniques in different classes. So, um, I've taken lots of training. I'm, I still take training. I still plan on taking more training. So you can never learn too much with this. It never ends. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm sure it's like anything. You need the basic structure. You have to understand like what you were saying, the points of the face, measure it, make it all symmetrical. I was even reading into that, that, that ratio. That's crazy that I know that, right? 1.6. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, nuts. Is the beauty ratio. It's the, it's called the golden uh, ratio of, for beauty. So like, wow. so there's an actual like uh, mathematical ratio. Like, if you look at models, or not even just people. Like, if you look at beauty in the in the nature, like that's yeah. the ratio. Like for like this something that we go, wow, whoa, she's beautiful, or wow, that tree's beautiful, one point six one eight. So that's like 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 the wow. plastic surgeons. They know that number. They're gonna any plastic wow. surgeon that's listening right now. They know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> that's, that's crazy, right? Yeah. Uh, the in the nail business, you know, dealing with nail techs over the past 18 years, uh, dealing with, you know, salon business like yours, uh, one of the things they get is with their customers in, in, in the nail side of things is 
you know, you get a new customer and hopefully maybe that customer has great natural nails or maybe the person that did her nails before was an amazing nail artist and took care of her nails, but maybe she moved to another state and now she's looking for a new nail tech. She comes to the salon and, and it's, it's an easy transition right into the, yeah. into the, into one quality nail tech to another quality nail tech. But here's another scenario. A lot of my students will complain, well, they're in a salon and they come and the new client comes in. It's not a standing client, but the new client comes in and their nails are thrashed, like just beat the heck. And they want the nail tech to fix it, right? So, So they have to go through so much trouble, taking it down, shaving it down a little bit to get to a point where they can actually form the nail and get it nice, structured, get it on them so it's looking right. Has that ever happened to you in the microblading side where somebody messed up somebody's face and you had to come and fix it? I see it every day. Every no way. Every day. Every I'm not day exactly. when your clients yeah. comes when you're so out of like how you how many clients do you get a day? So usually it depends on the day, but my max for permanent makeup is probably like six per day. Um, but I so I do a lot of consultations also. Um, okay. I do I do phone consultations and FaceTime consultations. So um, nine times out of ten, all those I, well, I had it done, you know, da da da. And I'm sometimes I can you know go over it or fix it. And other times, if it's too bad or too you know saturated with the wrong color or whatever, uh, they have to go get it removed. I can't. There's nothing I could do. Whoa! Yeah, so, I just feel bad for them. I don't even know them. I feel bad for them. <laughs> You, 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 yeah, I was gonna ask you, like, there's only so much you can do, right? Yep, so it's 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 like when it's like it's like when it's it's almost like when when somebody goes to Vegas and parties and gets a bad tiger tattoo in a bad spot, right? It's the same kind of thing. Yep, you're screwed, (laughs) (laughs) and it's your face. I mean, I, you know, and a lot of people are like price shoppers too, and I'm like. Don't price shop with your face. Like you can't price shop with your face. Yes. Your face. <laughs> so Mel, Mel was saying that when she was looking around and my mom and them were looking around, they were, they were like, oh, but we found this special. And Mel's like, no. Mel's yeah. like, no, she's smart. She's a smart shopper. She's like, no, I don't. Yeah. Face. Like this, exactly what you said. It's my face. I'm not going to mess it up. Like yeah. you could probably get, you could probably get this, uh, tat, this, 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 this microblading downtown for like 200 bucks, but it might go yeah. this way instead of this way or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I, just, I just go, okay, you know, um, that's fine. You could go, you know, it's, it's okay. But it's funny. Cause, um, Mel, she's funny. She came in. She asked so many questions. Yes. But I like, I love that because <laughs> like when people are just like, oh, okay, you know, whatever. I'm, I love answering all the, I love when people ask questions because, you know, it's like they're, they don't want to just go to anybody. So I love that she, she asked me a bunch of questions. She was like the authority in the room. <laughs> she is the authority in all rooms, by the way. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> she is, her, her brand is called Not a Fan. Did you know that? <laughs> her brand is called not a fan because she will go through like we, because I, we do a lot of foodie stuff. We go to a lot of different yeah. restaurants. We try a lot of food. Of course I like everything. Cause I just love to right. eat. And then we give it to Mel. That's the ultimate test. Yeah. If, to, if it's not good, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. She will let you know. Oh my God. Yeah, that's it's crazy. Funny. Oh yeah. She's we're, we're, we're a great duo. Um, crazy. In, in, in one, I like a lot about what, well, earlier we were talking about, you were doing some live stuff, some, uh, you were, you were on with another beauty professional. Uh, you're, you, 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 have you guys been doing a lot of that stuff lately? A lot of lives? Yeah. So we actually started this about a month ago. Um, and we just, I, we we were going to just do one and then we're like, you know what, we should just kind of keep this going every Monday and we call it Monday motivation and it's the month. Yeah, the mompreneur um, edition. So, mompreneur, nice. How many kids? Mompreneur. you got? Yeah, so yeah. we're having a lot of fun with it. You have kids? I do. I have two kids. Beautiful boy and girl. Uh, boy and girl. Yep. Nice. How old? They are. My son is ten, and my daughter six. Beautiful, young, fantastic. My my, uh, you you saw my. You probably seen. You probably showed you Kay, Kayla's pictures. Eight year old. I have yeah. a senior in high school. I got a sophomore in high school as well. Two boys and a girl. It's freaking crazy how busy you get. So the stuff you guys were talking about today, exactly that you were talking about 
being busy, being in the hustle, being business owners, um, and, and time management, you guys have to keep that going. It was really cool. I was listening to it for like 10 minutes. I was, I was driving in the car and I saw you were going lit up like live. I'm like, boom, I touched it. And, I, and then you yeah. were there talking to her. I was like, oh, dope. And yeah. killer stuff that you guys are talking about. It was, it was yeah. really cool. It was really yeah. interesting. It's, uh, you know, it's, I don't know. I think it's really, um, important to feel like you're not alone, you know, like when we're, we're doing things and we think, you know, you look at somebody else, it's easy to go, man, they just look like they got fit. They have it all figured out, you know, but we don't, <laughs> no one has it all figured out. So yeah. it's, it's good. Cause I think it's relatable. A lot of people don't have it figured out. A lot of people would ask the questions that you guys brought to the table during that live. Um, it's it's a great, it's a great, you're going to be a great resource for, for business owners. In one of your posts uh, recently, you said in the post that, uh, what is it? You were talking about your journey uh, from starting a business. You said that before you were working a nine to five job and and then all of a sudden you had to, you know, you, you decided to open your business, but it was like, it was like you took a leap. It was like a leap of faith almost you talked about. What was it like being a new business owner, taking that leap, taking that challenge in life at that moment? I can hear it in the way you were writing your copy is like this. It was almost like there were doubts or of other people, not you. It seemed like you knew what direction you were going. But yeah. What was it like? Talk to me. Don't let me put words in your mouth. How was that moment like when you were like, I'm taking this leap. I'm doing this. Yeah. Um. You know what? It was really scary. But, um. you know, I've always known that. I mean, I've always been scared, but I've always known like I had something greater in me. I just, you know, felt it like I felt like, no, I have I have something cool to offer. And I know there's something greater. So like I said, I've been, I've worked nine to five jobs and just, you know, having like 12 bosses and, and not owning my time and spending my time with my kids the way I want. So right. for me, it, yeah, for me, it was like, I just, I'm doing this. Like I'm going to take like my life by the horns and, and just go for it. I mean, I did it scared, but you know, just, I went for it. That's amazing. That's, that's, that's incredible. That, that step and people talk about it. Um, Steve Harvey talks about taking that leap over the, over the, over the cliff, taking that, you know, that one leap and you, it's like they say, uh, and he said that a lot of business owners have to take that leap. And when they do, it's either flight or flight or whatever. I don't know what he said after that. Yeah, but it's it's like, it's like, <laughs> that's the moment, right? It's either yeah. like, here we go. We took the jump. Are we going to yeah. swim? Are we going to fly? What are we going to do? Right? Yeah. And, um, you know, sometimes you really can't, you know, a lot of people put their input in, you know, about what you're saying and just no, you know, like I've had my mom. So, Oh, you should do this. You should do this, you know, and not that I've, and I love my mom, but just, you know, like, you know, what your passion is, like, you know, what, yes. what's going to make you go. So, um, you know, you just, you can't listen to the other voices or the outside noise. You, you gotta, you gotta really dig deep and, and know what your passion is. Cause I mean, what's life without passion? Yes, dude. My whole show is about passion. I don't know if Mel told yeah. you about that. You did a little bit. Yeah. Nice. This show is about passion, about finding people like yourself that have passion for, for whatever it is you do. You know, I've had sculptors on the show. I've had artists on the show. I've had musicians on the show, especially cooks. Cause I just, I just want to eat. So I might as well have them on there, but, yeah. but anybody that has passion for, for what they do and what passion tends to do is this, you, 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 you can work a nine to five. Like I do. It's awesome. It's exciting there. You know, I'm fortunate. I work for young nails. I get to do a lot of fun stuff and, and do some moving around. But a lot of people have like a nine to five where it's just like the same old dredging, job every single day. And I've had that too. I've, there was, before I met young nails, I was working in, you know, I, I did internet and that was fun. Kind of did a lot of cabling for the internet for hotels back when DSL was, off, was just coming in. Internet was really big. I was flying all over the place doing internet. But before that I was working in a lot of warehouses. People don't know that about me. It's like, I was working in warehouses, putting little like pieces of like a, a toilet together, like a part that went to a toilet over and over yeah. and over <laughs> and over again, the same part over and over again, putting together cabinets over and over and over again. So there's a, there's this, there's it, 
And for some reason, it seems dredging. It seems to take a lot out of you. It's when you're in that kind of just doing it, it it's kind of work. You kind yeah. of like, it takes from you. It, it drains the energy. You said in another post this that are actually in the same post, you talked about how exciting you are coming to work every day now that you, yeah. you see this, there's this excitement and and like you said a passion now it it seems like when people finally find their passion it's no holds barred it seems yeah. like you 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 now have almost endless energy is that what it seems like for you now yeah it does it's kind of like you fuel off of it you know like it's just fuel for you just to keep creating and and to keep going and it's i don't know it's just it's just really cool i love what i do and you know, I, I feel I've come a long way. You know, I don't know if you've watched um, one of our Monday motivations a couple weeks ago. You know, it was like the limiting self-belief. Yeah. Um, I, was, I was really heavy, you know, like I never thought I was good enough. I didn't think I could do it, you know. Um, so really overcoming those limiting beliefs has completely changed my life and just diving into what I love. I mean, that's what it comes down to. That's huge. I hope you guys talk a lot more about that because it's common. It's very common. Yeah. A lot of the people yeah. I bring on the show, as a matter of fact, talk about that. Like they were in their own way. Like, yeah. like, and it happens to me. I get in that. I'm like, Oh, you know, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I'm going to be good at interviewing Jackie today. I don't yeah. know if I'm in my, I don't know if I'm in my zone. And then, yeah. and then I pop on the mic and I got it. But, yeah. but before you jump on, you have that little hesitation. And a lot of people have that. A lot of performers yeah. have that. It's, it's interesting to hear everybody's take on that as they come to the show and talk about that. Food Hootie talked about that, that, that kind of like, uh, Self doubt, kind of that, like, like um, the you, the words you're telling the 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 self talk that you tell yourself that yeah. you convince yourself that you can't do something when you want to do it. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. It's the craziness of humans, right? It it really is, and sometimes it really holds you back. You know, I feel like, man, I could have done this sooner. You know, it's like if I didn't, you know, think that way, I could have done this sooner. So. I think it really holds you back. And, you know, it's just, it's really important to just believe in yourself. I mean, you, you know, it's like if en anyone could do, anyone could do whatever they want to do. It's just what's stopping them is them telling themselves, I can't, you know, I can't do that. Or they did it. Look, they're, I can't do that. So it's really just, that's really what has fueled me too. just, just the mindset. I've, I mean, I've had to work really hard. I've, I've had people tell me like, I'm not good enough or, you know, I've had people tell me horrible things, but you know, at the end of the day, you just got to come back and, and be center with yourself. That is huge. That is huge. You really have to, you really have to center yourself when you say it yourself, because there's a lot of people that are around you that care about you. 100% your parents care about you, your spouse, you, everybody loves you. And they might say things that aren't going to get you to where you're going because, and, and it's not any fault of theirs. They're, they're focused on, they care about you. They don't want you to fail. They don't want you to be in pain. They love you. But because they don't know your vision, where you're headed, they have no idea Right. They could say something totally wrong and you kind of just go, you kind of just had to like, yeah, put your teeth and kind of like, yeah, I know where I'm going and nobody else can help you with that. It's pretty much right. you, and, it's you and you. Yeah. Yeah. It's I've crazy. had that tons of times just, you know, and you just kind of like bite your lip and you're like, that's fine. I got me. It's okay. I got me. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know where you're going. It's it's crazy because a lot there's a lot on the internet about, of course, about negative talk about people outside talking about you. Of course, in social media, you get the bad comments. It's going to happen. You get bots talking crap about you. But I don't think enough is said about the people that actually love you. G G Gary V talks a lot about this. Where you know whether if you have a brother or sister that. You know, talks that maybe you have to like step away. You're not gonna, not, not. Of course, they're your family. You're always going to be ar around them. But the, 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 the kind of like just structuring your your time in a certain way to where the negativity is less. 
I mean, it could yeah. be your brother. You, I, I'm talking to people that are listening right now. It could be your brother. It could be your your sister. It could be a father. It could be a mother. You know, especially in the in the Mexican American community, like everybody knows. Yeah. Like, like what? What's your what? What? You're always, yeah. Why are you doing that? Wait, what are you doing? I don't. I don't, I don't know what your what's your what's your background, Jackie. Um. So I'm a, Italian. Italian. Yeah. So Italian. Like, forget him. What are you? What are you gonna yeah, be about it. Come on, forget about <laughs> it. Go on, we're gonna. Yeah. Make- Yes, yes. Come eat, come eat, come eat. <laughs> come eat. We're gonna eat some meatballs. Come over here. You know, yeah, yeah. Forget about that. We're gonna eat some meatballs. Forget about that. Yeah. So yeah, the same thing. It's, it's the same thing. It's a Latino thing. Yeah. It's just, it's, yeah, the same totally. thing. it's crazy. It's awesome, man. I, I love to see the excitement. I love to see the passion. I love to see what you're doing. And I didn't know the the other element of it. The I mean, of course, the brilliant microblading, the, the brilliant businesswoman. You're this is your sole sole owner, right? This is your business. This is my business. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Your business, your ownership, your thing, your style, your brand, and you're not stopping there. You're sharing your journey with other people, starting to do it Monday lives, Mother's yeah. Monday lives, Motivation Mondays with Jackie. Hey. My girl, thank you so much for coming on the show and spending yes. time with me. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This was awesome. Um, did you like it? <laughs> I'm spreading my wings a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad you came on. I'm glad you did a great job on my wife. You did a great job on my mom awesome. and my favorite cousin. She's stoked. So so everybody's happy. I'm sure your clients are happy. And the most important thing is you're happy. And that's right. what I'm excited about. Yes. No, cool. I am. <laughs> awesome, my girl. Thank you so much for, again for coming on. Hey. Guys, if you enjoyed the show, don't forget you can click on that little button in the, in the uh, description there. And if you'd like to support the channel for as little as a dollar a month, you can click on that little button and support the channel for, again, like as little as a dollar a month. We'd love to have you do that. But most importantly, we'd love to have you listen. Thanks for sending in the DMs that you enjoy the show. Thanks again for listening. And we will see you soon.